Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and welcome to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time we're going to be taking a look at a deck that's personally one of my favorites as of recently, and this new support wave for the deck from Chaos Impact is one of my favorite legacy support waves I've ever seen for a deck, and I think that it is flawless, I think it is perfect. I don't think there has ever been a legacy support wave for a deck that has been so minimized in terms of how many cards it got, but so impactful in terms of what it does for the strategy. I'm talking about Gorgon, Queen of the Evil Eye, the new Link 2, and the Evil Eye of Gorgon, the new Equip spell that is also a consistency booster for the deck, as well as allowing the deck to play certain cards in different ways, and ultimately making the entire Evil Eye card pool very good. It makes the entire Evil Eye deck function a lot more well in terms of a self-standing entity, rather than what it was previously when the first set of Evil Eye cards came out back in Infinite Ignition, back in April or whenever those came out. Previously, the deck was very much a Guru Stun-esque type deck where it didn't really have a lot of aggression, and a lot of the cards that the deck had access to were not very good. They were not very playable for the deck. Specifically, the two familiars, Basilisk and Cultible Bass, you didn't really have any way for those to have an insane amount of value in the deck, but with Evil Eye of Gorgon, suddenly the entire strategy of the deck can open up, the deck can play a lot more aggressively, the deck can do a lot more things, because now you have a Link monster that specifically just only requires one Evil Eye monster and then any other monster, so you can do things like take your opponent's cards with Mind Control, Link away with them, take things with Crackdown, Link away with them, there's a lot of different potential strategies that you can go about with playing the new Evil Eye deck because all of the cards are playable and it ultimately makes the deck a lot more consistent as well because you have additional starters in the form of Foolish Burial Goods and all that sort of stuff. But I could honestly talk about this deck all day in terms of what the sorts of theories you can put into it are, but ultimately we are here for some gameplay. What I've got is I've got eight replays for you. I'm playtesting against a friend who wanted to playtest his going second Orcus build that is based off of the two lists that topped YCS London, and he wanted to test it against something rogue, and I told him about this Evil Eye deck, and he was like, sure, might as well, might as well see if my deck is decent enough, and he knew that I wanted to get footage, so what you see is you see that this deck is capable of putting out multiple things now, in terms of previously, you didn't really have access to a lot of, you know, in-engine built disruptions that you could generate because you didn't have really good ways to get multiple things on the board. You really had to just resolve Serzial, get Evil Eye of Selene, and then the rest of your cards had to dictate what you could do. But now you can have a handful of Evil Eye cards and that can generate multiple disruptions. You can generate a Gorgon with a Serzial on the board, both of them equipped with Selene's like you see here. And in the process of that, depending on what your hand was, you are also capable of searching cards like Evil Eye Defeat or Evil Eye Retribution to be spelled trap negations or be double bounces to just deal with monster threats that your two monsters can't already deal with. Even if you're just ending on Gorgon, that's still really, really good because like the deck is capable of playing so well now with all of its card pool. But second replay, what you see is I go for the field spell, I get ashed, don't really have a follow-up, so, like, the deck is still very susceptible to things like hand traps, like Infinite Impermanence on your Surzeal, or Ash Blossom on your Surzeal, or your Field Spell. Ash Blossom hitting Evil Eye of Gorgon is particularly bad, uh, but you have to take the good with the bad. It's sort of a rogue-based deck, but we're down into a simplified game state here, and as you can see, like, this deck can top deck well because you have the copies of the Field Spell in the deck that you can, you know, get for Surzeal, or you can just draw Surzeal outright, and then you start going off from there. Now, the deck has a lot of good recursion capabilities because of the fact that Selene can equip itself from Grave. And honestly, what's cool is the fact that you have access to all these new Evil Eye cards that you're playing because of your ability to go into Gorgon and because of Evil Eye of Gorgon's ability to cycle those cards around, that your field spell is going to give you a lot more value when you pop it with Surzeal or if it gets popped in general. So like previously, you were going to be like adding back nothing and popping other cards not the field spell. But now you're incentivized to pop the field spell because you can add back like one of the familiars, Basilisk, or you've linked away a, an original Surzeal into Gorgon. And then if the field spell gets popped, you're able to add back Surzeal. Like it allows you to fuel your grave to make the field spell better. But this deck sort of really thrives in a simplified game state. And it's amazing because it forces the game into a simplified game state with Gorgon specifically, with the Gorgon Link, with Queen of the Evil Eye. 
because it negates monster effects, that's huge. That is so good. It's so good that you have something that negates monster effects now, because previously we had Surzeal, which popped special summon monsters. We had Medusa, which was a DD Crow. And then we had Xerzeal, which was incredibly hard to make, and it pops any card, and it has the lowest cost of using that effect, whereas Medusa and Surzeal, you have to deal with something in terms of board management to make those effects consistently live. Whereas with Gorgon, Queen of the Evil Eye, you only have to be able to destroy the cards it points to during the next standby phase, which means you're never going to be summoning things in the arrows that it points to, and you can use that as additional removal against your opponent depending on if they summon things in incorrect zones or not. But as you can see there, this deck is actually very susceptible to Super Poly. <laughs> so that is a huge problem uh, this deck has. It's unfortunate that, uh, that that's the case, but it didn't really cross my mind that this deck could get Super Polyed until it happened to me the first time, uh, because you leave Surzeal and Gorgon out and those are two darks. And what sucks even more is that you're not just getting Super Polyed for two, you're getting Super Polyed for effectively four. Because those two equip spells, the only reason you left those cards on the board, the fact that they were equipped with things, also go to the grave. Now, Selene can recycle itself and all that sort of stuff, but it still sucks. But going into the next game, my hand is amazing. Activating Surzeal after normal summoning it, getting impermanenced. Uh, something that I noticed after watching these replays back is that my buddy, my friend, my opponent in these games was holding copies of impermanence and stuff if he had super poly. If he had opened super poly, he wasn't impermanencing my things because he wants me to commit further in. He wants me to summon Gorgon, Queen of the Evil Eye, and Surzeal and leave them up. Whereas if he uses the impermanence and it does stop me, then suddenly that super poly has no value. Whereas it's better for him to hold the super poly, especially since he is playing Orcus, and Orcist is a deck that, you know, is predominantly dark monsters. You could say it's exclusively dark monsters. So even if I'm only ending on the Evil Eye Link and the Super Poly isn't live for my entire field, he could still do something like summon Armageddon Knight or summon an Orcist and Super Poly those away just to clear the board of my Gorgon, Queen of the Evil Eye, or my Surzeal, whatever I left out, right? So it's very interesting. I, I'm very, very much interested in the fact that, like, he's never seen this deck before, but, like, after just a couple of games, he's already started picking up exactly what he needs to do. Evil Eye of Gorgon there, punching for a massive amount of damage. Another thing that it solves for the deck, it doesn't just solve consistency issues, it solves the fact that the deck sort of had a low ceiling in terms of being able to close out games, but now you pay life, and that fuels Gorgon, which allows you to close out games really fast with big game shots. Here's another one of those replays, like I said, where he has impermanence and super poly in hand, and he's just not using the impermanence because he knows that I'm just doing replays for video purposes, and I'm going to try and play the deck to the best of the capability. If I have a hand full of Evil Eye cards, I'm going to use them to make Gorgon, Queen of the Evil Eye, and Surzeal. I'm trying to showcase like the deck's consistency in doing these boards, not really so much its matchups in the specific you know concept of what we're doing here. But the fact that I am winning games against going second Orcus, that is main decking a lot of teched out nonsense in order to, you know, beat rogue matchups and do that sort of stuff. Because he's like maining Cosmics, he's maining Super Poly, which Super Poly is incredibly detrimental, as we've already said, maining Impermanences, Hand Traps, all that sort of stuff. It's interesting that I'm even capable of winning games with this, and this is not what I would consider an optimized build of Evil Eye by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not even sure if I want to main deck Namiru or not, like it's in this main deck here. But I'm constantly on the fence of, you know, swapping it around for something like Super Poly, which would be equally as good going second, but would also make, like, the Thunder Dragon matchup a bit easier for me as a whole. Because Thunder Dragon is one of the harder matchups with this deck, because if they end on Double Colossus, or even just one Colossus, you really just can't deal with it unless your hand is perfect. Uh, but the fact that this is a deck that is sort of a combo deck at this point, because you just start accessing all of this stuff but yet you are still playing Pot of Extravagance is fantastic. I haven't really seen a deck that operates quite like this. When this deck was released back in April, it was sort of like a Guru deck, whereas now it can be a Guru deck. You're playing some Floodgates, obviously, because it supports you, uh, you know, it supports your plays very well, but you are capable of just having a hand of four Evil Eye cards with different names, and those four Evil Eye cards with different names can just become 
four disruptions. It can become a Surzeal, a Gorgon, both equipped with something, and a Search Defeat and a Search Retribution, something like that. Like, four very valid disruptions slash negates that you're capable of using to just outright win games. So it's a stun deck that sort of operates like a combo deck. It's really interesting. I love the niche of this deck. Uh, but anyway, another replay starting, starting with Surzeal, getting Ash Blossomed, not really being able to do anything if we didn't have Gorgon, but now Gorgon fixes hands because I opened the other familiar. I'm able to use Foolish Burial Goods sending Gorgon. The deck is very consistent now because of the fact that Evil Eye cards are better to open than they've ever been before because if you open Foolish Burial Goods or, you know, just something to put the Gorgon in grave, that's effectively a card that searches a field spell, which can search for Surzeal, get your play started, or various m different ways that they can just be, you know, played around with. But, as you can see, didn't really open that strong. Uh, this deck definitely is still one of those decks where you have to open pretty well uh, to beat something that's like Tier 1, like Orchest or whatever, especially if it's super teched out against you, like this build is, because it's a going second build playing super polys and stuff like that. Um, it's, uh, it's just one of those things where even though it's a on paper good strategy and on paper works because all of its cards fuel very well into one another, uh, it's one of those things where you still have to open pretty well, but this play was slick. Uh, I got impermanence twice, so I couldn't put Gorgon in grave, but I hard drew a Gorgon, so I just equipped it to my Surzeal, linked away, and then discarded the, uh, the other familiar to search for Selene, but I'm still not that... Uh, well off in terms of uh, resources, but my opponent's hand sucks. Uh, negating the Armageddon Knight is literally all I need to do to win, and then I have the uh, follow-up Surzeal, which gets ashed, but that's fine. I have Selene engraved that he popped off the Phoenix to try and draw a new card, and I just get to search the uh, familiar with Surzeal, just put another body on board, and then send a card to grave. Uh, well, actually, I think the Surzeal got ashed. I just had the familiar in hand, so I summoned it, and that got the Selene back. Um, now I'm just dealing with a floating Gizmech, which is not a problem because Selene prevents my card from being targeted or destroyed by battle. So, like, it's already negating cards, and it's already doing that for free. It's getting bigger each time, and then it's also just immune to so many things. Uh, like, the fact that you need a piece of backer removal for it is fantastic uh, in terms of what, like, the card is designed to do for the deck. Like, I can't say enough good things about Evil Live Selene, uh, personally. But this deck is just fantastic to me. I love the way that the deck plays with Evil Eye of Gorgon, because Evil Eye of Gorgon allows the deck so much access into its other cards, and like I said, it makes your other Evil Eye names good, regardless of what they are. If you're opening like multiple copies of Evil Eye of Defeat, or Evil Eye of Retribution, or whatever, and you have like Foolish Burial Goods, then suddenly those cards can be rotated out for something else, or even if you're not opening Foolish Burial Goods, if you're opening something like Surzeal, you're capable of, you know, getting basilisk use basilisk send gorgon rotate one of those cards out for something else and then like it's fantastic because of the ability that allows you to fuel your grave for selene recursions allows you to fuel your grave for a bunch of different stuff and the fact that you know this link two is really good means that you possibly could be playing awakening as well although i'm not playing it in this build i don't find it to be necessary uh, a card i am thinking of testing is uh, medusa because the recursion from grave might be you know relevant on another normal summon but at the same time you could play tour guide because tour guide is really good because of gorgon queen of the evil eye it doesn't require two evil eye cards so you can tour guide into basilisk send evil eye of gorgon and then make gorgon queen of the evil eye like there's so many different things that you could do with this deck there's so many different ways that you could take it using this as either a dedicated evil eye stun engine with back row supporting it and trying to you know just abuse evil eye of gorgon as much as possible or you could go a different route of just like playing it uh as a smaller more stun based engine but yet it is still more consistent because of the fact that you have Foolish Burial Goods. Another thing I'm considering playing is Metal Foes Fusion, because if you have access to Gorgon and you have Foolish Burial Goods, then Metal Foes Fusion would be a card that you would want to use that Foolish Burial Goods for. Uh, but at the same time, getting extra copies of Gorgon Engrave early is still decent, even if you can't use it that turn, because then it turns any Evil Eye that you draw into effectively any Evil Eye card in your deck, in terms of a monster, spell, trap, whatever. So, like, this deck just... Fully comes together, 
fantastic legacy support. I cannot wait to test with this deck a bit more. Uh, this is definitely something that I feel I could do well on the regional level. If it gets really, really lucky and has a really, really good day, it could probably even top a YCS. Uh, it's definitely one of the better, like, stun-based strategies I've seen because, again, it operates a bit like a combo deck depending on what its hands are. But at the end of the day, nothing stopping it from also just going one monster, a bunch of sets. Some of those sets are searched disruptions like Defeat or Retribution. Some of them could be things like Floodgates, Solemns, whatever. There's nothing stopping it from operating like both of those decks. And I find that uh, actually fascinating. It does have some weak spots, like I said, of it being able to be super polyed. <laughs> in hurting a lot when you get super polyed. But I digress. I love this deck a lot. It's been one of my favorite things to mess around with as of recently. Still trying to find a build that I'm 100% happy with. But I figured I would show you guys this and show you some, uh, some of the testing that I've done. Just to be a little excuse to do a video in this format. And maybe we could have some more like this in the future. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you want to watch live streams where I test this deck and other decks, live stream link to my Twitch page is in the description down below. Go there, follow the uh, page so you can get notified of the next live streams. I stream three times a week at minimum. Uh, and if you want to check what the schedule is, I have a schedule of live streaming posted in my Discord, which I update every week when I decide what days I'm going to be streaming. And if you want to chat with me and other people about different decks, Discord is also a good place for you. But other than that, if you're new here, Subscribe if you want to see more stuff. I'd love to welcome you on board and otherwise leave a like and leave a comment Let me know what you guys think as per usual But other than that as always guys, thanks for watching Let me know what you think as I've already said in the comments down below Thanks for your time as usual guys and take care. I will see you in the next video